Hi everyone. In this video I will be demonstrating fixed effects regression in SPSS for repeated measures or longitudinal data. And we will be using the least squares dummy variable approach. So you may hear this type of regression analysis referred to as fixed effects panel regression. And essentially the, data, the type of data that we're going to be working with involves a cross section of data measured repeatedly on the independent and dependent variables. Now before I get started with this demonstration, I do want to mention that underneath the video description you'll find a link to the SPSS data file that I'll be working from in this presentation. So you can download a copy of the data to follow along. You will also find a link to a supplemental PowerPoint that uh, contains two examples and uh, more detail in terms of interpretation of the results. And in this video, I'm going to be mainly covering the first example. So the first example involves student data. The second involves airline data. So let's go ahead and get started with our student data. And uh, before I open up SPSS, let's talk about the nature of the data and what we're essentially going to be uh, predicting. So you'll see that we have a screenshot up here of uh, the first seven rows of our data and this data is in wide format so each row represents a different student in our data set uh, so there's a subject identifier right there so the columns represent or reflect uh, different variables measured at different time points so right here we have perceived math ability measured at times 1, 2, and 3, perceived science ability measured at times 1, 2, and 3, math grades measured across those time points, uh, perceived language ability, and then we also have science grades measured at those three time points. So essentially we're going to be uh, predicting changes in science grades over time as a function of changes in perceived math ability, perceived science ability, perceived language ability, and uh, math achievement which is going to be measured using math grades. So let's go ahead and open up SPSS and begin our demonstration. So here we have our data opened up and again this is in wide format and as I said before we have 30 cases. So what we're going to need to do is to restructure our data. The first step is basically to restructure our data from wide format into long format. And um, now if your data is already in long format, there's no need to do any restructuring. But if it's in wide format, that's going to be the first step. So to do this in SPSS, we will go to data and then go down to restructure and press that. It asks, what do you want to do? We want to restructure selected variables into cases. So I'll press next right here. And then it asks, how many variable groups do you want to restructure? Uh, we actually don't want to restructure just one variable group. We have five variable groups with three measurements uh, for each of those. So I'm going to go down here and for how many I'm going to type five. Then we'll press next and now we need to uh, indicate our new uh, target variables and how we're going to you know, set those variables up. Uh, also when we restructure our data by default we're going to have a uh, case identifier called ID. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to go over to where it says target variable. If we click on this little arrow, you can see we have some default names. And for this first one, I'm going to call this P, then uh, math ability, so our perceived math ability, so P, math, uh, AB. And I'm going to move the three perceived math ability variables for uh, representing those three time points over to this box right here. Then we're going to do the same thing for um, our science ability variable. So in this case, I'm going to call this P and then and then uh, SCIAB for perceived science ability. So I'll move those three variables over to this box. And then we're going to uh, move our math grades variable over. So in this case, I'll, I'll call this, um, let's see right here, math GRDS and we're going to move this over, or these three uh, variables over. And then we're going to do perceived language ability. So I'll call this P-L-A-N-G-A-B for perceived language ability. We'll move those over to this box. And then finally we will uh, do science grades. So right here I will type in S-C-I grades 
and then we're going to move our science grades variables over to the target uh, this box right here so then we'll press next and it asks how many index variables do you want to create so I'm going to stick with one and that index variable in our data set is essentially going to reflect our measurement occasions so I'll uh, press next and we'll finish out and now when we look at our data set you can see it's in long format so you can see that we have the first student right here um, that's represented we have uh, index times one two and three so those are the measurement occasions for perceived math ability, perceived science ability, math grades, perceived language ability, and perceived, and science uh, grades. Then we have for student two, we have measurement occasions one, two, and three for each of those three variables and so forth. So that's how it's structured in long format. Now before we continue on, uh, you'll want to save this data set uh, in long format you don't because currently right now it's still set up uh, if I saved it it would uh, save over the previous wide format so I'm going to go ahead and save this before proceeding okay so now I've saved that data set uh, in long format to a new variable name so I didn't so I wouldn't overwrite uh, the data that was in the wide format so at this point now we need to create dummy variables uh, for inclusion in our regression analysis and we're going to create uh, dummy variables for each student so uh, essentially uh, to do this what we'll do is we'll go to transform and then go down to create dummy variables so I'll click on that and we're going to move the ID variable over to the create dummy variables box so keep in mind um, right now it's registering uh, ID as a categorical variable uh, essentially the three uh, 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 circles that you see right here is uh, indicating that we're dealing with a nominal variable so this works with a nominal or ordinal but uh, you, this is not going to work if you are using a scale variable so like subject over here would not be appropriate to move over to this box and uh, by the way really quickly uh, you know I'm working with SPSS version 28 and so this is um, a, an option that is available in SPSS version 28 if you didn't have that option associated with your SPSS version then the only way to accomplish the dummy variable approach is to essentially uh, use the recode function to create dummy variables for each uh, case which is going to be a real pain but uh, in this case fortunately I have that option for creating dummy variables so I can do this so now after we've moved our ID variable over to the create dummy variables box now I need to establish a root name for those dummy variables I'm just going to call it dumb uh, and uh, we'll uh, press OK and so now when we look at our uh, data set you'll see that we have dummy variables that have been created one for each case so you'll see for instance that for the first student um, that's spanning these uh, first three rows we have a dummy value of one uh, for each of those rows and then zeros for all of the other students uh, measured at different time points then for the second student right here you can see that we have ones on dummy variable two and zeros for all of the other students across time then for student three you'll see that we have um, values of one and zeros for all of the other rows in the data set and so forth so now when we're performing our regression analysis we're going to be including uh, the number of dummy variables minus one and essentially this is consistent with the standard approach to incorporating factor variables in regression analysis essentially um, in that context you are um, recoding your factors uh, into dummy variables and then you include the number of dummies minus uh, or the number of uh, number of categories on your original factor variable minus one so we're doing the same thing in the context of uh, the procedure that I'm outlining right here so now we're going to go to analyze go down to regression and linear and I'm going to move the dependent variable science grades over to the dependent box and I'm going to use 29 of the 30 dummy variables so I'm going to actually start with uh, dummy 2 all the way through 30 and move those over so that first dummy variable is not going to be included in our regression I'm going to press next and then we're going to add our time varying predictors which are uh, math ability 
uh, our perceived math ability, perceived science ability, math grades, and perceived language ability. We'll move those over to this box here. And with uh, statistics, I'm going to click on R square change. So now when I click on continue and then on OK, I get my output. You'll notice that where it says variables entered, uh, it starts off by entering in model one all of those dummy variables um, to capture all of the between subjects variation with respect to our dependent variable, which is science grades. And then in model two, we are adding in the time varying predictors alongside those, um, those dummy variables. So when we scroll down then to our model summary table, you'll see that model one is reflecting just those dummy variables. And you'll see the R square right here is 0.665. So you, that basically tells us then that 66.5% of the variation in science grades is occurring between students. And you can see down here that we have a significant F test. Basically, this information is not really uh, very pertinent to our main question about the effects of time varying predictors on our time varying outcome variable. But this is uh, one component uh, that to be aware of, but if I was reporting on the results, I probably wouldn't spend much time uh, going over that particular uh, bit of information. You'll see too that we have with model two, we have an R square of 0.737. And this R square, uh, according to our F test would be deemed as statistically significant. But again, this R square that we have right here is not telling us a whole lot uh, or not really helping us answer our question because it ref reflects the combined effect of our between uh, uh, predictors, which are the dummy variables and our time varying predictors. Um, so again, this is not going to offer very much uh, when it comes to understanding the effect of the time varying predictors on our dependent variable. So the, uh, the main information that you will want to focus in on is this R square change right here. So this is the change uh, in R square from model one to model two. And that is essentially reflecting the change in R square as a result of adding in our time varying predictors. So you can see that uh, the R square change is 0 0.072, meaning that we're accounting for an additional 7.2% of the variation or the total variation. Um, after uh, adding in our time varying predictors. And you can see that we have this F test that's given right here. And so you can see that change is statistically significant. You could also, if you want, uh, you could also compute a squared multiple partial R, which is going to represent the proportion of the variation in our science grades that was unexplained by uh, the, our dummy variables that's accounted for by our time varying predictors. So to do this, it's very easy. All you have to do is to take this R squared change uh, right here and divide it by one minus the R squared that you see uh, right here. So in other words, we take this value and divide by one minus that R squared value and that will get you uh, the squared multiple partial R. And I go into that uh, in a little bit more detail in the PowerPoint. So we'll go ahead and scroll down then and look at our coefficients output. And you can see that we have um, the intercept and regression slopes um, for all of our dummy variables for model one. And as I mentioned before, this model is not terribly interesting or important because this is just modeling the between uh, uh, student variability in science grades. So we want to scroll down and we have our coefficients uh, for model two. And once again, we're not really terribly interested in uh, the intercept by itself and the um, and the uh, slopes for the dummy variables. But when we scroll down a little bit further, we get our time varying predictors right here, which are perceived math ability, perceived science ability, math grades, uh, and perceived language ability. So you can see that our regression slope for perceived math ability was actually negative, but it would not be significant at the conventional 0.05 level. Perceived science ability, we have a positive slope, and we can see that that is statistically significant. And then we see that math grades, we have a positive slope, and we have significance. 
Uh, perceived language ability, we have a positive slope, uh, but would not be con considered significant at the conventional 0.05 level. So among our four uh, predictor variables, we only had two that are significant. So this is basically telling us that, uh, that uh, during times where we have higher perceived uh, science ability and math grades, we also uh, tend to see higher uh, science grades. Okay, so that pretty well wraps up this video presentation on fixed effects regression in SPSS with repeated measures or longitudinal data. And uh, I appreciate you watching.